Brett, correct me if I'm wrong on some of these things. I don't know if the trusts can help in some in some of that part of it, but that's a big that's a big you know frustration a lot of my clients have. Many of my California clients have left California prior to the exit. What would you say is the biggest frustration when it comes to those that you are serving and helping who are selling a 10, 50, 100 million dollar business? and they have a huge capital gains tax challenge, what's the biggest frustration you've seen as it pertains to strategies uh, that they might be considering using? Yeah, biggest one I'm seeing is California residents get the hell out of California. Um, you know, some massive taxes you have to incur as being a resident. And there's there's attorneys that specialize in helping you uh, extradite yourself, how to, how to get out of California without having uh, a taxable consequence in the back end of that. So, if you're thinking about exiting and you're in California and you're not keen on paying 13 and percent to the state of California, you need to figure out where to domicile yourself somewhere otherwise. And Brett, correct me if I'm wrong on some of these things. I don't know if the trusts can help in some in some of that part of it, but that's a big that's a big you know frustration a lot of my clients have. Many of my California clients have left California prior to the exit, uh, Nevada, Texas, Florida, to to avoid that big chunk. And then another big one: a lot of times people will see, you know, let's say a 10 million dollar exit you know, results in, you know, maybe $5 million in cash at closing, um, another $5 million structured out as equity and earn out or, or other payments. But that $5 million starts to get diminished when you've got partners that you're splitting it up with, when you've got the sales tax that's going on. And then also you do have, uh, you know, a commission for, you know, a broker like myself, just like you would a realtor in closing costs. So that money does start to disappear, you know, quicker than you might think. And having a tax plan is really important. Most people are not moving to Puerto Rico. I don't think I've had a single client do that yet. So uh, the reality is you need to get yourself set up with, um, you know, charitable remainder trust or another function, you know, functional trust that you can move your money into. And I'd recommend, you know, try not to live on all that money because I think, you know, again, Brett, this is your background, but you're going to get taxed on whatever you pull out and it doesn't go in the trust. You're going to get taxed pretty quick about that. So that's going to cost you a chunk of change. So if you've got a $5 million, you know, pot of money coming to you and you're going to go buy a million dollar house, you're going to be paying taxes on that million bucks. You know, a tax structure is not going to help you with that. Um, maybe it can save you on that, on that $4 million in some uh, various ways. But a lot of times my clients, they don't understand that from the time that you get a business valuation at, at $10 million, you're not ending up with $10 million in your pocket. There's a lot of things that go into it and the money does start to disappear um, in various ways. So you have to be conscious of every, every penny. Yeah, good thoughts. And I'll, I'll reply to a couple of those, right, Nate? And I couldn't agree with you more. So the answer is it all depends, right? So every single circumstance is a little bit different. So whether you live in California and depending on what you're selling in California and if it's Nexus in California or if it's sourced in California, these are all certain things and how the entity is structured and 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 you want to be aware of that. Um, you know, if it's definitely, if it's property, for example, you've done multiple 1031 exchanges, like investment property, even if you exchange out into like a Texas or a Florida, that Nexus is still California. And so they're still owed their tax. Now, if it's a business or e-commerce, that's technology. Yeah, there might be some creative ways and uh, that uh, that you might be able to restructure. I'm not sure. That might be neat to have that connection there. But yeah. what's neat about the deferred sales trust, regardless of what you're selling, wherever you're at, you can exit in a way that gives you tax deferral, can give you elimination of the estate tax, but give you those freedoms and flexibilities to be an entrepreneur or to be a real estate investor or to be completely passive into real estate or stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. And otherwise, diversify your wealth without having to do all of those hoops. So sometimes people are calling us and there's 30 days to close. Um, there's, you know, there's, there's, there's 15 days close and they may not have the time to be able to structure everything in a way that could be more advantageous. And so um, we encourage you to go to capitalgainstaxsolutions.com where you can learn all about how to build not only a tax flow exit plan, but also a team to help you execute this. Cause it's not just the strategy or the idea, it's always hiring the who being the how that team to help you with that wealth creation, that wealth preservation. Same reason why you want to hire Nate to make sure you're having, you're maximizing your sales price, right? And you're getting the best offer, the best terms, most, most amount of buyers potentially looking at it. So you can, you can, you, you can, you can have certainty of close and a, and a, uh, and a high price. You want to check, check out the deferred sales trust as a way, by the way, you don't have to give it away to charity. You don't have to buy a bunch of life insurance and it's super flexible for the investments. Go to capitalgainstaxsolutions.com.